There are a lot of gouache tips and tutorials out there, but are they all good? That's a question. Should you follow their advice? I've gathered 10 videos from TikTok and I review them, telling you if it's a good advice or not. This is a kind of a FAQ about gouache. Are you ready for some gouache tips? Let's go. Right, so she's clever, placing a paper to protect her table. I should do this. And mixing the colors on the go on the page. Yes, good. Color variations, a bit of mustard. You wouldn't think it's suitable, but it is. Then using the edge of the brush, very good. You'd better get a damaged brush to do this. And making the C with a tape to protect the horizon lines. This is clever, I do it too. And using a very, very fine brush, I, I would use something a bit bigger so it's easier to handle a lot of paint inside. And then you can go around them for the waves. You don't have to follow a specific pattern. Well, good job, because she's using Himi gouache and Himi gouache is quite difficult to blend. That's cool. Nice tutorial. I agree with everything. Uh, the only thing is I would use two jars of water so you can have your water not so dirty. You get one to wash off the paint from the brush and the other one to get clean fresh water. So with one, just one jar, I don't know how you do this. But all in all, good one. Another one still with Hemi gouache, but this one is a large box. I don't know if you need so many colors, but that's another story. So the palette for the skin seems to be quite odd to me. It's not the kind of thing I would use. And her style is to use very patchy colors with no blending. Why not? But still, I think the overall shade of the skin is a bit too ashy. I would not do it this way. Yeah, the skin is great at the end, but the shadows are a grayish purplish and it should be a bit more saturated and I wouldn't have mixed uh, the way she did, but that's how she does. Um, I think for uh, shadows in the face, it's better if you get something that is really a strong color, not something too grayish. Grayish is more for mid-tones. She's using a large tape because she wants a large border, I guess. And sketching just a fox and the rest she will be going without any sketch on. So that's good. But she's beginning by the foreground. I think it's better to begin with what is more far away from you because you can be layers on top of it. So this is what she's doing. She's coming back to the background and building after. So it doesn't really make sense to begin. But really the sky and build on top of it. Right, a lot of textures with a heavy, thick paint. That's good. And blending as she goes. I think she's painting on a quite um, humid layer below because the colors are fusing into each other. This is one of the good things with gouache. And then very fine details. She's using a very, very fine brush. As I said before, it's better if you're using a round brush with more paint inside and a very fine tip. Easier, you don't have to refill the brush so often. And she's doing great with her tape. Just test your tape and your paper. It's a, it's a mix of both. It's not just a tape. People always ask me, what is your tape? Well, the tape doesn't really matter. What's important is the couple, paper and tape. And if you want to know more about this, I have a video just about this subject that you can watch here. Let's go for a starry painting. Um, Still taping on the on the table. It seems to be a glass table. That's a good idea also. And she's using a brush very roughly. You really need to, don't be so precious with your brushes, but I think she's going really hard. And what's interesting, she's using acrylic fluid paint to drip the stars on it. So you can mix gouache and acrylics, not a problem. Well, when I say mix, you can add acrylic on top of gouache. You don't want to mix the two paints together. <laughs> that wouldn't work. That's cute. Well done. Let's go for another sunset because sunsets are really cool to paint. You can mix any colors you want in the background. She's blending very well. 
adding the light color and just rubbing after. Yeah, that's cool. Maybe our paint is a bit too thick because you can tell that she has trouble filling the bumps of the texture paper. And now she's using a damaged brush to add the foliage. Very cool. Adding some light on top of it. Some clouds. Could be a bit better, but all right. Yeah, I think the clouds could get more attention and more work, but the overall effect is okay. This one is about layering and increasing the thickness of the paint. This is something I love to do. So you begin with a very liquid layer and then you build on top of it with more thick paint. And at the end, you get something that is like oil or acrylic, as she says. So something you can do as well is really the more layers you have and the more thickness you have. So you'd better begin with something really liquid and transparent. This is a good way to use your dry palette. You can just spray it, add water on it, and you'll get something very liquid with a lot of pigments inside, and it can be your first layer, and then you build on top of it. And at the very end, it's the creamy consistency fresh from the tube. And this is exactly what this one is doing as well. She's painting on an already painted background. Maybe it's acrylic, maybe it's gouache, we don't know. And she's adding layers on top of it. And what's interesting is the pink background, she's leaving some spots here and there where the background is shining, very cool. And using a very damaged brush for the grass and very fine brush for the details. And interesting thing is to let the background shine under your painting. Are you still there? So I guess it's time for you to put the like button. It really helps the video to spread. Thank you. Merci. And this Himi gouache set is really dry. You don't want to get to this point. You want to spray it every time you open it before painting. So it really keep it moisture. And also you want to keep it in the fridge because this is the same temperature all the time and you are safer when you store it in the fridge. Now she's adding water and she still has kind of rocks inside. Really, it's been dry for maybe a year or so. Uh, what you could do is add a drop or two of Arabic gum. This is one of the pigments uh, binder that is inside gouache and I think it would really help to get back the creamy consistency. Well, at this stage, no matter what she does, she will never get back to the really smooth and creamy consistency from the beginning. So you'd better be safe than sorry and spray it when you use it. And if you don't use it, open it from time to time and add a spray of water. I'm using tap water, but if you have molding issues, you could use distilled water that would prevent the molding. And that's what this one is doing. She's spraying a box of Himi gouache when she's opening it. Good practice. She's using something specific, but you just need that water. Washi can work on some kind of papers, not all. You have to test, as I said. All right, this is really not a great tutorial. This is just uh, take a photo and paint it, more or less. But you can tell how she's mixing and making the first layer very watery. And yes, you don't have to be very horizontal with your brush strokes, you can go crazy. And darkening the color with a complementary color. Yeah, very good point. Don't use black, you don't want to use black. I'm preparing a video about color mixing, by the way. Yeah, and practice. Practice doesn't make perfect. No, forget about that. Practice makes improvement and this is what we want. We want to improve, we want to learn, we want to grow as an artist. This one obviously wants to have even surfaces very flat and she's using a quite heavy, thick paint. This is great. But now on the blue flower, it seems that she's tracing the contour of the shape and then filling, but there is a slight delay um, the overall contour has dried a bit, so it's a different color than when she is placing the paint inside. Well, she's coming back on top of it with a darker color, so it doesn't really mind, but you have to think about this. It would be better to make one petal after each other, so you can make the contour and then fill it and then move to the next petal. Otherwise, you will get a slight difference in the colors. All in all, 
Those tutorials are not bad, except for one or two exceptions, of course. Let me know in comments if you like this video so I can make more. And now YouTube thinks this is the best video for you to watch next. See you there.